The old theater had been shut down for years, sitting on the edge of town like a ghost since the fire. A sign at the front of the parking lot offered the building to anyone willing to pay the right price, although few had inquired and none had been willing to fork over the cash. It would have sat in disrepair until the structure became unstable, if not for one man and a dream. Jonathan March dreamed of being an actor on the big screen. He spent his high school years honing his acting skills before moving to Los Angeles in search of his big break. A couple of commercials and about a million auditions later, he found himself no further ahead than where he started as he approached his 30th birthday. Realizing acting probably wasn't going to work out, he made the decision to move back to his hometown to work as a handyman for the business his dad owned. He knew his way around general repairs and basic construction work, and the opportunity would give him some time to think about what he wanted to do next with his life. It was on the drive home from Los Angeles to Detroit that he stumbled upon a little abandoned theater when he stopped for gas in a small town in Colorado. The scene couldn't have been more perfect. As he filled up his tank, he glanced across the street to an open field which had a beautiful view of the mountains in the distance. On the other side of the field sat the building that would spark his imagination. He was a couple thousand dollars short of the asking price, but the seller was more than happy to lower it for him, even knocking off enough that he had some cash to invest in fixing the place up. A quick call home to let his family know what he was doing, and he was all set to start the renovations. The theater wasn't in very good shape, but it wouldn't be long before he had it looking like it did when it first opened in the 1940s. The community was surprisingly excited to hear someone was finally fixing up the old place, and most of the businesses in town offered him discounts or even free supplies to get it up and running again. There were a lot of long days and a few all-nighters along the journey, but it was all worth it to Jonathan to have something so amazing to call his own. As part of the process of fixing the place up, he looked into the history after a few people mentioned the fire to him. During a show in the late 1980s, some bad wiring ignited a blaze that indirectly claimed 30 lives during one of the performances. Most of the dead were members of the audience who were trampled in the rush to get out, though a couple of performers died as well, trying to help others escape. It was the worst tragedy in the town's history, but no one could bring themselves to tear the building down or repair the damage. As renovations wrapped up, Jonathan found many of the residents were open to the idea of having a performance to celebrate the grand reopening and he set about holding auditions for one of his all-time favorite musicals. He brought on a director that worked at the local high school and was able to fill the backstage positions much quicker than he anticipated. The open auditions were a bit more difficult, but with a couple of rounds of callbacks, they were able to complete the cast and begin preparing for the show. It was only when they began rehearsals that the strange occurrences started. Little things at first. A prop would go missing and reappear days later somewhere that made no sense. Voices could be heard on stage when no one was on it. Things seemed to ramp up as opening night approached, with lights acting up and the sound system failing on more than one occasion. Jonathan's dream was quickly becoming a nightmare. The night before the first performance, he was alone in the theater, standing on the stage and looking out at the empty seats. He always did the same thing before performances when he was in high school. It was his way of clearing his head before the chaos of opening night. As he sat there staring out, the lights shining bright on the stage, he thought he saw someone sitting in the back row. He shouted out, but there was no answer, and the figure seemed to have disappeared. Assuming his nerves were just getting to him, he stood up and began rehearsing the play on his own, 
singing each part and moving around the stage to hit his marks as if the music was playing. He made it through the first couple of scenes before stopping to take a break, and the sound of applause from the auditorium caught him off guard. Stumbling backward, he looked out to see what he estimated was a few dozen people cheering him on. They were there for at least 30 seconds until he closed his eyes and took a deep breath. The sound of clapping and cheering stopped and the seats were once again empty when he opened his eyes. Deciding he probably needed rest rather than another rehearsal, he shut off the lights and made his way home for the night. A glass of wine and some sleep brought him to a fresh morning where the night before had been nothing but a dream and opening night was only hours away. Final preparations were made throughout the day and by 6 o'clock that evening the crowd was beginning to fill in. The cast and crew were nervous and Jonathan was trying to calm everyone down through pep talks and general words of encouragement. Most of them had never done anything like what they were getting ready to do and they all had family and friends watching. But when the curtain went up, the butterflies seemed to fade. The show went off perfectly, with everyone hitting their cues and no technical issues for the first time in weeks. By the end, the crowd was on their feet, and showers of roses were being thrown onto the stage as everyone took a bow. Jonathan couldn't dream of it going any better, at least until he looked up to see an empty auditorium and stage. He looked around, trying to figure out what was going on. Only seconds before, he was surrounded by dozens of people. Now the building was silent, and it looked just as run down as the day he had bought it. Stumbling backward, he found himself running into one of the props for the play that he had just put on. As he hit the ground, he looked up to see the faces of the cast, crew, and audience looking at him. They were all staring, silently watching. No one moved to help him, and he could feel himself turning red as hundreds of eyes drilled into him. He closed his eyes and took a deep breath. When he opened them again, he was sitting on the edge of the stage with the lights on him as he looked out onto the empty seats and renovated building. Had he just imagined opening night? What was going on? Checking his phone, he found that the first performance was still 24 hours away. He must be more exhausted than he realized. Standing up, he left the theater once again, going home for a good night's rest. That was all he needed, just a little more sleep. Opening night played out the exact same way as before. Jonathan spent the entire night living one long feeling of deja vu, ending with the crowd throwing roses at his and the cast's feet as they bowed. There was one difference this time. As he bowed for the third time, he noticed a single black rose among the sea of red flowers. The noise around him died down, and he looked back up to find himself alone in the theater again. He had to be losing his mind. The flowers were there. It looked like a performance had just wrapped up, but there was no one else around. As he tried to process what was happening, he heard whispering coming from backstage. The voices sounded familiar, but he couldn't place where he knew them from. He crept back through the curtain, looking for the source of the sound, but he was only greeted with an empty space. There was one light illuminating the area, and below it sat a small table with a newspaper on it. Walking over, he read the headline that sat above the picture of the theater engulfed in flames. Fire kills 30, owner to blame. The words shot through him like an arrow. He started reading the article, but he only made it a couple of paragraphs in when he saw a line that made his stomach turn in knots. The fire chief stated today that the blaze was most likely due to shortcuts taken by the owner, Mr. Jonathan March, who also perished in the blaze. There was no way. He had a life, a family outside of this place. How could he be dead? 
The room seemed to be spinning as he fell to his knees. Faces began appearing all around him, some burnt, some blackened from smoke. They weren't speaking, but he could hear them screaming inside his head as he closed his eyes again. The noise stopped. When he opened his eyes, he was sitting on the stage once more, staring out over the empty seats. It must have been my imagination, he thought. A good night's rest would help, and tomorrow they would open with the most amazing performance the old theater had ever seen. <laughs>